Good morning. I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. Today uh, is Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. So glad to have you with us for our congregation at prayer. Um, Again, a note, if you weren't with us yesterday, that these are being pre-recorded because I'm going out of town. And uh, so I'd encourage you to use the congregation at prayer that's distributed each week in our service folder. It's also available on our website under church and then I believe news um, to do the the memorization work uh, that comes before our readings uh, and do that before you watch the video if you like and then or do it afterwards whichever works and then go and pray the prayers that are given at the conclusion of the prayer guide as well. Uh, I'll give me, be giving you the catechesis here via video. All right. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 29. Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men, therefore behold, I will again do a marvelous work among this people, a marvelous work and wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hidden. Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel far from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, they say, who sees us and who knows us. Surely you have these things turned around. Shall the potter be esteemed as the clay? For shall the thing made say of him who made it, he did not make me? Or shall the thing formed of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Is it not yet a little while, till Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be esteemed as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of the obscurity and out of the darkness. The humble also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to nothing, the scornful one is consumed, and all who watch for iniquity are cut off, who make a man an offender by a word, and lay a snare for him who reproves in the gate, and turn aside the just by empty words. Therefore thus says the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, nor shall his face grow now grow pale. But when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will hallow my name, and hallow the Holy One of Jacob, and fear the God of Israel. These also who erred in spirit will come to understanding, and those who complained will learn doctrine. There ends the reading. And our reading for catechesis today uh, is from Matthew chapter 12. Yeah. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And his disciples were hungry, and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was angry, or hungry, excuse me, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. All right, so some catechesis on this text. If you remember yesterday, Jesus was talking um, about uh, the burden being light and that the Lord of the Sabbath would give you rest, right? The Lord would give you rest, Sabbath. And now, no wonder, the next chapter, very on, moving on, is the first day of the week, the Sabbath day. And what is the Sabbath day again? Yeah, as I said yesterday, a day of rest, right? It's the day that God gives as a gift of rest to the man and woman before sin entered into the world. What were his disciples doing on this Sabbath? Now they were plucking heads of grain and eating. 
What did the Pharisees say about it, though? Yeah, they were doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Of what story does Jesus remind the Pharisees in verses 3 and 4? Yeah, this is the story of David um, and his soldiers eating the showbread. All right, now that story may not be too familiar with you, so maybe it's worth looking at. This is from 1 Samuel chapter 21. Now David came to Nob to Ahimelech the priest, and Ahimelech was afraid when he met David and said to him, Why are you alone and no one is with you? So David said to Ahimelech the priest, The king has ordered me on some business and said to me, Do not let anyone know anything about the business on which I send you or what I have commanded you. And I have directed my young men to such and such a place. Now therefore, what have you on hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand or whatever can be found. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread, ordinary bread, on hand, but there is the holy bread. Again, the show bread. And if the young men have at least uh, have at least kept themselves from women. Then David answered the priest and said to him, Truly, women have been kept from us for about three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy. And the bread is, in effect, common, even though it was consecrated in the vessel this day. So the priest gave him the holy bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread which had been taken from before the Lord in order to put hot bread in its place on the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg the Edomite, the chief of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. And David said to Ahimelech, Is there not here on hand a spear or a sword? For I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. So the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there it is, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take it, take that, take it, for there is no other except the one here. Pretty cool story. Yeah. So, the bread is in effect common. It was consecrated in the vessel earlier in the day. Uh, And these men, of course, have been set apart from women, which is one of the criteria for eating of the the holy bread. You could see um, for that, um, Exodus 19, verse 15, be ready for the third day, right? So David knows his Levitical, his, his Mosaic law. What does Jesus then bring up in verse 5? Or, (laughs) another story, have you not read in the law, that is Moses' law, that on the Sabbath the priests of the temple profane the Sabbath and are, are blameless? What? What is he talking about? Yeah, this is, this is in Numbers 28. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs in the first year without blemish, and two tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering mixed with oil with the drink offering. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath, besides the regular burnt offering with its drink offering. You see, so even the priest um, eats on the Sabbath. That's what Jesus is getting after there. So, do they profane the Sabbath or desecrate it? No. That's not what the Sabbath is given for. I'll get to it in a minute. Um, so then what is Jesus saying in verse, in verse 6? Right. So we've had two examples. Now verse 6. Yet I say to you that in this place there is one who greater than the temple. Yeah. Who is the one greater than the temple? Well, he's talking about himself, is he not? Yeah. He is the priest who will offer the perfect sacrifice. That's himself. So that he can give perfect rest to his disciples. Uh, What important words does Jesus cite again in verse 7? We heard this quite a bit last week. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. All right, that's connected back uh, what we heard last week with Matthew 11, verse uh, 28, maybe? Yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, we just heard this part yesterday. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you 
rest, desire mercy, not sacrifice. Jesus mercifully gives rest. He doesn't demand rest. Now, this is a quote. I don't know if we talked about this. Um, from Micah 6, 1 Samuel 15. Um, but I think he has in mind Hosea chapter 6. I'll back up just a little bit. For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew it goes away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets and slain them by the words of my mouth. And your judgments are like the light that goes forth. I, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Yeah, there's quite a bit more in here. We talked about this the last time we looked at Hosea 6, right? That um, actually Hosea is describing Christ's own death and resurrection and our own need to be slain, as you see here in verse 5, slain by God's word so that he can raise us to life again. Um, I've said this before, and it bears repeating, that the only story in the Bible, I know this is going to sound dramatic, the only story in the Bible is death and resurrection. That's what the whole Bible is about, your death and your resurrection in Jesus. Okay. Um, What does verse 8 mean then? Yeah, the Son of... Son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath, right? So what is he saying? He is the Lord of creation. He's the Lord over everything he has created. The Sabbath was given for man, not for God. Meditation on this text. The Pharisees live by the law alone so that they must interpret the Sabbath as pure law. Jesus is directing our attention to the first Sabbath as the real governing principle of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was about true rest of body and soul, just as Jesus had promised in the verses prior to this. Both David and the priests used the Sabbath to give rest or life because eating refreshes and rests men's bodies. Jesus is greater than the temple. He is David. He is the priest. He is the sacrifice. In allowing his disciples to eat, he is letting them eat as God had permitted Adam and Eve, to eat freely in the garden on the Sabbath. Here he calls us to interpret all things through the gospel, that is, through mercy, not the sacrifices of the law. Yeah, just as Jesus, you heard in the sermon on Sunday, be merciful even as my Father is merciful. That is, live according to the gospel, (laughs) not according to the law. All right, there ends our meditation for this day. Lord's blessings with you today. And uh, again, if you uh, are able, um, please go pull up the congregation of prayer and you can continue by um, praying out loud, um, singing out loud, saying the creed, saying the collect for this week, including uh, in petition those in our congregation who celebrate or who are sorrow or who grieve this day. All right, Lord be with you all and we'll see you again tomorrow.